Boss USA. So this episode of Shop Time Live is going to cover soldering joints. We're going to talk about how to solder your landing gear so you get good strong joints. Um, and I'm going to walk you step by step through the process. We're going to talk about what tools you're going to need. We're going to talk about how to do it. We're going to talk about what it should look like. And I'm going to show pictures and close up videos of everything. So stay tuned. Okay, so one of the things that we hear back mo most often on soldering is, hey, I can't get the solder to stick. I can't get the solder to stick. The reason you can't get the solder to stick is because the wires that you're using aren't clean enough. You have really got to make sure that you get you these wires super clean. So there's a couple ways of doing it. I actually like to use emery cloth. And what I will do is I will take the emery cloth, and I'm going to get this up here so you can see it. And I will take the emery cloth and I will just rub this with the emery cloth for a really long time. So this is probably the most not done correct um, step in this whole process. And if you're having trouble with the solder sticking, this is 90% of the issue. This wire has to be clean. So what I do, and I'm not going to spend the time to sit here and do it as long as I normally would because it's a really long time. What I try to do is I try to get it to that shiny consistency. See the difference between that end and that end? Once I get it to that shiny consistency and I'm happy with the results, then I take it up and I wash it off with hot soap and water and clean it and clean it and clean it. Then what I do is I don't touch the end of that wire again. Okay, so don't touch the portion that you're going to solder. After you get it clean, don't touch it. If you have to wear rubber gloves, wear rubber gloves, but you don't want to touch that clean part. Okay. So some of the tools you're going to need. You're going to need a nice iron. So I use the Weller 175 watt iron. This is 50, 60 bucks. Okay. You're also gonna need some good flux, okay? Any any silver solder flux, lead-free tinning flux is perfectly fine. I use a solder. You're not going to wanna use a rosin core solder for this work. Rosin core solder works okay for electronic sets up, setups, but you're not gonna wanna try to use that on this because it's not gonna turn out to make a strong enough joint for you. So you wanna get silver bearing solder. You wanna to try to find it in a 15% here. So find the one you like, find the one you like to use, about a 15% because you don't wanna to have to get it too hot to get it to work. 15% means it should have a pretty low temperature for heating, which is gonna be around the 430 to 480 mark, depending on the brand you're using. I believe this one here is 430. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to get yourself some good wire, okay? This is available in most big box stores, and I'll tell you a quick tip on where to find this, as I actually had trouble getting this. It was over in the soldering area, so I started wandering around, and it all of a sudden dawned on me, and the picture hanging area, where they have all the picture hanging stuff, this is where you'll find your wire. I normally use an 18 gauge copper wire. They have 10 gauge, they have 14 gauge, they have 20 gauge. I like the 18 gauge because I like the way it works with these applications. Next thing you're going to want to make sure you have on hand is a good wet sponge. Okay, you're going to want to have a sponge right on hand and wet. You're going to use this to clean off your soldering iron. You're going to use this to clean up your soldering joints. And you're going to uh, make sure your solder, uh, is everything stays clean and looks nice with the wet sponge. That's really it for tools. You don't need much else. You might want to have a set of cross cuts on hand because you're going to need to cut your copper wire. Other than that, you want to make sure you have a spot where you can operate safely. Uh, this is going to put off quite a bit of fumes, so you're going to want to make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. You're also going to want to make sure that uh, you don't have anything under where you're soldering that it's going to damage because the solder is going to drip on the floor. And on that note, you want to make sure that your feet and your legs or anything else that's important to you is not under where you're soldering because it is going to come off of there super hot and it will burn a hole right in whatever it touches. Um, so this application is going to be used for soldering gear, okay? But I will tell you that this same process holds true for struts, holds true for if you want to solder your um, control rods on, it 
any of that kind of stuff that you want to solder for our applications with the exception of electronics. You don't want to use this process for electronics. You would use this process and you're going to get great joints that are going to be nice and strong and you're never going to have to worry about them coming undone on you. So let's get started with the actual starting. So one of the most overlooked steps of this whole process is making sure you tin the wires good. So what's going to happen is, is if you tin the wires correctly, then when you go to solder this with your wire wrapping, your copper wire wrapping and your other solder is going to catch very quickly and it won't take you near as long to get a good solid joint. So make sure you remember to go ahead and tin your wires. I haven't tinned this piece yet, so I am going to tin that here on film so you can see that process. You do want to use flux for this. So um, I showed earlier the picture of the flux and we talked about what flux I use. Uh, it's very important to flux it because what flux is going to do is going to make that one adhere to that wire a little bit better. And what I do is I take a regular epoxy or a, a regular brush, um, acid brush. I cut it off a little bit shorter so it's stiffer. And then I just put my flux on my wire. It doesn't take a whole lot for this step. So you don't want to go crazy with it. But you do want to get some flux on there so that it will adhere quicker. If you don't use flux, you would see a, a really big difference in what kind of a joint you're going to get. I do want to point out that you want to make sure, as you can see here, for where I've um, tinned the other wires, you want to make sure that there's nothing important under where you're working. Uh, if you're doing this correctly, you're going to get some on the floor. So I just moved my rubber flooring back so I wouldn't drip anything on it. And you also want to make sure you keep yourself out of the way. Uh, safety first, this is going to drip and you don't want molten solder on your leg. Uh, I do apologize for the sound in the background there. I've got my little uh, fan running uh, to try to pull some of the fuse off. This is something that you want to do in a well-ventilated area. If you're doing it inside like I am, you want to make sure you run a couple of fans to pull all that outside because it is fairly toxic. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to try to get this set up here. I'm going to clean the tip of my soldering iron first and simply all that is is a wet sponge. And you just go in and you can clean the tip of your gun. It takes a couple of seconds. It'll just save you some time as you're working. That process actually does a really good job of cleaning the tip of your iron. So now, one of the mistakes people make, I think, a lot is they... Um, they put too much heat on. So you want to get it hot, but you don't want it to be too hot. So if, you're, if you've got your iron plugged in and you're doing a lot of stuff before you run your solder, you may actually want to take a second and unplug it for just a few and let it kind of cool. And then uh, that way it's not too hot because what happens if it's too hot is you burn that flux off too quickly and it doesn't really have a chance to do its job. So kind of monitor that. Um, I don't really have a temperature for you, but if you're gonna be doing a lot of stuff before you're ready to solder, what I would recommend is getting all that stuff done and plugging your iron in and letting it come to temperature and then just unplug it. It only takes it a couple of minutes to heat back up to the proper temperature uh, and it's worth the time because you're gonna have end up with better joints in the long run. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna move just a little bit here so I can get a better angle. And I'm gonna go ahead and tin this wire. Now you don't wanna go crazy with this at this point. Because you are just tinning the wire. You want to make sure you get it all the way around, just like that. Now, a quick tip, if you don't like the way it's looking, so that looks a little gloppy to me, you can take your wet sponge while it's still hot and just pull a little bit of that off so you don't have the big glops. Um, 
you're only just putting a thin coating of solder on that wire so that when you go to do the rest, you will actually be able to adhere a lot quicker. And that's pretty much it. That wire is now tinned and ready to go. You can see it here, I can't touch it, but you can see it here, it's ready to solder. And when I go and get the rest of the wiring done and get ready to go, that will be just perfect and ready to accept the next step. Okay, so one of the things I've done to help with this process a little bit is that when I was tinning this wire, I put a little flat spot with my iron at the end, on the end of that wire. I know it's kind of hard to see on the video, but there's a flat spot on that other wire there. And what I do is I put that flat spot right where I want it to be. I have a little bend on the end of my wire. I bring it down inside to the V, okay? And then wrap. This is the most difficult part is to hang on to this. Wrap away from your V or your bend in your wire. So it kind of holds itself. Once you get this first one around, adjust it. Just a little bit and then you can pull it tight once you get a couple of these wraps then what I like to do is I like to come in here and start straightening it up a little bit I'll use my needle nose here to move all this down and to get it where I want it because you want to make sure you wrap this fairly tightly around these gear and once you get it to this point the rest of it's easy you just want to make sure you maintain a real tight wind all the way around. Just working it as you go to get it where you want it. Make sure you keep a good amount of pressure on that so they wind tightly. And then slide them down if you need to. You can use your pliers. I try to be careful when I'm using my pliers for this section because honestly, copper is a little soft and I don't like my wire to have a bunch of weird flat spots in it that don't really mean anything or do anything. So I try to be careful when I'm using my needle nose, but I also like to try to make this really a pretty tight weave. So then, once I get to that point, that's about good. And if you look on the other side, there's a flat spot where the bottom wire comes out. And I usually try to wrap past the top of that about a half wrap. And that's where I cut it off. I cut it off as close as I can. Because then what I can do is I can come in here with my needle nose and adjust this so that it goes down inside and you don't have that open-ended wire sticking out. Once you get your solder on this, you won't even be able to see where the wire stops. You just kind of try to push it up into that void a little, like that. And I do the same thing with the other side. Now the other side, what I like to try to do because that's gonna to be tough to bend. I pull that out and then I take my cross cuts and I put right up and close to that V as I can get. Cut that section off and then I can take my needle nose and bend that down out of the way so it's not obvious. It takes a little bit of practice and honestly, the wire is not super expensive, so if you need to take a couple of runs at it, it's okay. You can go and buy more wire. But once you get your solder on there, that'll make a nice clean joint, and you won't have any issues with it. Kind of squish it together so it's nice and tight.
This needs to move up a little. There we go. And like I say, this is a, a section where you you want to make sure you pay close attention to what you're doing because you want this to look nice. Um, this particular model that I'm working on will have fairings, so the soldering won't be really all that visible, but I still like to make it look nice. And that's right there what we're going for. Now, I just wanted to make sure I pointed out while I was doing this, I actually unplugged my soldering iron because I don't want that soldering iron to be too hot. And I think that'll make okay, it good. Now we're ready for some flux on this part. And you're gonna do the, basically the same thing. You don't wanna go overkill with the flux. You do wanna get a good amount on there and you wanna try to squish it down as much as you can in the wire. This is gonna help it adhere a lot better. Again, you don't wanna go nuts with it because it just makes a mess and just makes more smoke but it's gonna burn off anyways, so you don't need a ton, and you'll see why. Because we tend our wires before we start it, this solder joint's actually gonna go fairly easy. So once you're sure you've got it fluxed in there good enough, You're ready to solder it up. So I will point out that I did go back in and every time before I solder something new, I go ahead and I re-clean my iron tip. You can see uh, just a wet sponge. Once it's the temperature, just the wet sponge, clean that up good. You don't want any of that old solder that you've already worked with getting into your joint because a lot of times it'll be, uh, it'll have a little bit different properties because it's set there for a while. So with the soldering of the joint, what you'll do, you'll just go ahead and come in and start heating this up now you don't want to be in a big rush on this part you want to make sure that that you let that get nice and warm you're going to see this the flux melt away and you just come in here and you start testing with your solder you're basically you're just going to hold it on there until your solder starts to flow it'll take it a second there it goes once it starts going It'll go in there nice and easy. Then you can just paste it in. That solder's going here down inside there all on its own. You don't have to force it. And you can add a little bit more because it's still going to be plenty warm enough. Get it nice where you like it. Now here's a quick tip for this whole process. If you're not liking it, if you're getting too much or you don't like the way it looks, you can go in here and clean this up with a wet sponge. And it's gonna be good to go. So there you go, there's your soldered landing gear. Thanks very much for watching the video. We really appreciate your support. Thanks for coming in. I hope this was helpful. If you have any other questions, make sure you reach out to us and let us know. And as always, thank you very much for watching.